Insight is what we're all looking for. So we're looking for insight. We're looking for something that's out there that's an opportunity. Something that's kind of a needle in a haystack. And the, the thing I tell the fellows and the graduate students each year is, you'll know it when you see it. And you're like, what's that mean? Yeah, I'll give you some examples, but they're usually in one of kind of, of four categories, and they are unpredictable to when you'll find them. You might find them, be lucky and find one early and be digging through the literature or talking to a physician and say, wait a minute, there's a disease that gets treated that doesn't have an outcome, and there's lots of patients that have that, and there's no therapy? Is that possible? And you realize that there is. There's a lot of those out there, but you kind of got to dig and dig and dig. I think they're kind of in these four categories, and I'll kind of tell you what they are in the next few minutes. Um, and those categories are a new opportunity or new science. So if something that's just come out, someone's got a new fundamental discovery, it creates an opportunity for a new translational technology and ultimately a new business. A new perspective on an old uh, problem. Okay, so I think it's been done for a long time, and I'm kind of retooling it. A discovery of old science. Okay, something that's been done maybe surgically that I can now do with a catheter, and changes in never events. So this is Neodyne. Neodyne was actually at Jeff Gertner's lab at Stanford. He's a plastic surgeon. We collaborate a lot with him. He's been a big supporter of biodesign. He is a plastic surgeon that came up with this fundamental work that showed that scar volume is related to mechanical stress. And so this idea in mouse or in humans that the stress and strain is what causes the greater or less strain. And so he thought, maybe I can come up with a new model and I can actually think about a scar widening by stress. So if I create a band-aid that reduces that stress, actually I'll get less scar. And so he has actually, this technology needed, I was just acquired. Actually, his scars are actually 60% smaller because of this band-aid system. So a new perspective on old problems. This is iRhythm, came out of by design. Okay? So patients with palpitations. If you have kind of an irregular heartbeat, you feel palpitations, you usually go to your general doctor. So what does he do? Your general doctor says, hmm, might be a heart problem. Go to a cardiologist. Cardiologist says, it's electrical. Hmm, I don't do that. Go to electrophysiologist. Electrophysiologist hooks you up this thing called a Holter monitor. And you got to wear it around for the next two days, three days, four days. You can't take a shower. You can't do anything. You just got to sleep in it. It doesn't work. When the leads fall off, the data doesn't work out very well. Okay? And when you're done with it, someone's got to download all that data, process it, and eventually send it back to the physiologist, then the cardiologist, and then the internist eventually calls you. Okay? Broken system. This was the invention called Zeopatch. It was just acquired by St. Jude Medical. So iRhythm was acquired. It's a disposable product that's actually a plastic patch that applies to the chest. It's small and miniaturized. You put it on for seven days. Put it in the emergency room, you put it on the uh, internist office, you got palpitations, <laughs> stick it in your chest, good, go home. You go home, you do what you do, at seven days you literally take it off, pull a component off, drop it in the mail, goes in the mail, goes to central processing, gets immediately sent by electronically back to your internist. Why is that important? You'd say, well, electrophysiologists, cardiologists are losing business. Mm, they studied that pretty well. Electrophysiologists, cardiologists don't like. I'm a cardiologist, hate palpitations, right? Because I'm like, mm, I put stents in. I don't know what to do. I'll send you the electrician. Okay? <laughs> the electrician says, I don't know if you have it. Let me hook up this holter to you. Because what I really want to do is I want to do ablation in the catheter lab, right? Because that's what I like to do, and that's how I get paid. I don't get paid for seeing you with all these machines. It doesn't pay for me. So they came up with a way that satisfied all the stakeholders and cut out all the middle process. And so that's the basis for IRA. So let's talk about discovering old science. Sympathetic renal innervation. This was one of the biggest, hottest technologies in the last two years. This is Ardian, came out of Menlo Park, which is about four miles from Palo Alto, where Stanford's based. This is Simplicity. It was a catheter put in the renal artery to burn the nerves, ablate the nerves to reduce blood pressure. Crazy idea, right? They're using RF energy inside an artery to actually kill the nerves. It seemed like a pretty novel idea. It was acquired by Medtronic about nine months ago for 1.4 billion. Pretty good, right? Look on the left, that's the paper, 1952. Surgically done, surgical predicate. They examined it. So Mark Dean, founder of the company, found this paper in the basement of Stanford. And when he did, he went, wait a minute, here's the data. 326 patients, outcomes and everything. Everyone forgot it. So he just came up with a catheter way to do it. And so they're now doing it. This is a huge market opportunity. One of the biggest areas in cardiovascular disease. The two biggest areas are valves and hypertension. Rate. And the last one would be called changes in never events. Never events are complications that happen in the hospital that used to be paid and are no longer paid. So you went into the hospital and you developed an ulcer, like a bed ulcer. Okay? It used to be that the hospital said, well, you've been in the hospital, so the insurance company or repairs would say, well, we treated you for your hip, and we're going to pay for you for your ulcer because you got an ulcer because you had to be in the hospital. 
Or how about you came in with trauma, you came in the hospital, and they put you in the ICU, and you got intubated, and unfortunately you got pneumonia on a ventilator, which can happen, right? Well, you had extra hospital days because of the ventilator pneumonia. So in the United States in particular, Medicare said, no, 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 we're not paying for that anymore. You've got to figure out a way to solve that. So five years ago, the insurance company, the hospitals didn't care. Right? They said, well, we don't know how to solve this, right? CMS pays us no matter whether you get the infection or not. So actually, in uh, 2010, for one of the problems, in 2011, they cut off pain. Those are now called never events, which means that the hospital has to find a way to solve the problem because it's considered a hospital-associated complication. So what are they here? Now they're buying technology as fast as they can. They gotta find a way to solve the problem because that is paid under one overall DRG. You get the same amount whether you're in the hospital for five days or 10 days. And so if they can get you out of the hospital in five days, they save money. And so this is actually a device that is opposed to uh, treating the tube where people were with, uh, with ventilator associated pneumonia. 16 million patients in the United States alone get intubated every year. Okay, that's a lot of people, right? Why? Because everybody has elective surgery and it gets general anesthesia, right? They put the tube in. Well, what happens in, after that surgery? If something happens, they go, mm, let's put you in the ICU at night. And then what happens if you get an infection? Well, the same tube gets put in. So the same tube gets put in. It costs two bucks. Well, some of the great inventions there, he said, I'll give you a $10 tube, a $40 tube, or a $100 tube. The $100 tube is really good because it's got all these special, it's actually got gold particles on it. It's got anti-inflammatories. It's got drugs. It's going to work really well. Well, $100 times $16 million. That's something you can't pay for. So what these guys came up with is they came with a device that goes over the top of the tube and actually blocks the problem. So it's got, it only for so you slip it in. So if you're in the hospital for 48 hours, put it in, and now you just turn that market, which is 16 million, down to 250,000. And they get the technology. And they came up with the intellectual property, and they came there. So this is treating never events. These are the opportunities for insight.